Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today we're looking at another member of the Bad Batch, although I kind of missed out and did not review the last two figures from the Bad Batch, Hunter and the Elite Forces Trooper, or whatever his name is technically called, I forget. Um, so this is going to be kind of like a three for one right up at the top for everyone that clicks on this video. We're going to do the record review, but at the end, after I kind of compare them to the rest of the members of the Bad Batch, I'll also just kind of give my brief thoughts on Hunter and the Trooper just because they're already like pretty much released. And so I don't feel like a full review is even going to be helpful to most people because there's already a plethora of reviews out on the market for you guys to uh, take a look at. So we're going to look at this guy first and then we'll look at them. But yeah, I, I have been keeping up with watching the show. I have been keeping up with the uh, the releases and everything. I, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it's it, I don't think it's as good as the Clone Wars personally, but it has its moments, and I do really enjoy watching them every Friday, and uh, especially this most recent episode, the one on Ryloth. That was a really good episode, but I won't I won't spoil anything. Let's just say I'm looking forward to that four pack from Amazon all the more after the the initial Ryloth episode. But yeah, let's dive into the Black Series 6-inch Wrecker figure. This is the deluxe figure, so he does come in a larger box than usual, though I guess I don't really know if he is actually a, a, a good deluxe figure, because while you do get more plastic with him, he is a bulkier figure. There's not really additional accessories to talk about or to uh, to really say that it's a deluxe figure. I know with like the Cal Kestis that I reviewed, that was my first real deluxe figure from Hasbro, and you got a bunch of accessories. You got the extra lightsaber, you got the little uh, the, the little Boglin creature, and you got all the holocrons and things like that. That made it deluxe in my opinion. Whereas with Wrecker, I don't know if you really get that much more compared to the other members of the Bad Batch, which are all standard release figures. So take that with, take that how you will, I suppose. It, it may not be the most suitable deluxe figure, but Hasbro in their bottom line decided that this is a deluxe figure, and so it is what it is. We can't, we can't change that. But let's take a look at the box here. It comes with a standard red stripe that we've been getting with the Bad Batch series. It's a good color. I do like that a lot. It says Wrecker, picture window artwork on the side there which lines up with Captain Rex which is the Walmart exclusive and I believe Tech which is interesting because I still haven't gotten Tech in a pre-order or anything like that but I'm pretty sure that's Tech because the other boxes uh, let's see if we can get these all in order here we'll move Wrecker off to the side this is currently how all of the Bad Batch releases so far line up there's one missing here which I think is Tech this is his elbow there, and then we have the Walmart exclusive Rex here. And I gotta say, I'm not terribly fond of how they did this, because maybe I'm just thinking of this in how I would do it. And I would just say, I feel like you should have all the members of the Bad Batch together, so you'd have Tech here and then Wrecker, and not have this elite squad trooper. Um, that's just me. And I also don't like that they have the exclusive Captain Rex, because if you're doing the full lineup, you're going to be missing Captain Rex. I feel like exclusives shouldn't necessarily be a part of this diorama box thing for the people that collect the boxes or keep them on card. However you uh, particularly like your figures, I personally like them out of the box, but with these, I have been enjoying keeping all of them for the, the lineup, and it's kind of weird. So I don't actually have the figure that goes here. I don't have anything to show you that what would line up with Wrecker, but you can kind of see how it would look, and I think that this is a weird choice to have the Elite Squad Trooper right in the middle of all of these characters that are that are actually the main characters. And these guys we see for like little blips and a few seconds here and there in the show. But either way, there's that. And if we spin this box around, you have the bio. You can pause and read all of that if you feel so inclined. Larger artwork, this is number five in the Bad Batch series. A bunch of stuff about how this is a very small, accessorized figure, and you should be careful around children with it. Small parts, uh, barcode on the bottom. Nothing really exciting on this side either. And there you have it. That is the box. And now for the main attraction, the actual figure of Wrecker. And... It's a pretty good figure. Overall, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty cool. I dig it. I, I'm liking these figures. I'm liking the sculpt. I like the body mold that they've been using, although this is a unique body mold from the other Bad Batch figures. It shares pretty much the same articulation. 
And yeah, it, it will go over all that in more detail. But looking at it overall, it is a really nice looking figure. Like even if you don't like the Bad Batch, you got to respect how cool this design is with the skull type. I, I really don't know what that is. It's it's not like a human skull, but it's a maybe an alien skull of some kind painted on his helmet looking very menacing. You have the 99 up top, skulls on both shoulder pads, which I think I think originally in like the production photos they didn't have this and people were kind of complaining. So I am glad that they caught that and did have it on the final figure. And overall the figure is very nicely weathered as well. I feel like you know, it is a deluxe figure, so maybe they went a little bit heavier with the weathering, or maybe they're just trying to stay true to the character since his armor is more beat up than the other characters. But there is a lot of really nice little silver highlights on the edges here and here, along the shoulder pads, and it just adds a nice, and it adds a nice weathered look. Now, I don't know if I can get the light to hit it just right or not, but his armor is also much more pitted and scratched and dented than other characters which I think is great. Like that is a really nice detail that they actually sculpted into the figure and it looks great. It could have done with maybe like a paint wash over top of it just to make those details really pop. But overall it's nice, all the dents and the scratches and it just makes him look like, well, he's the tank of the squad and he really is. He's the one that rushes into danger and uses a lot of rather large explosives and it makes sense. And to really emphasize that, here's a side-by-side -side with Hunter. You can see on the arms, on the thighs especially, there is not as much weathering. Hunter does have some weathering on the shins, but it's definitely not as heavy as, uh, as Wrecker has it. Again, it just looks really nice, and it's a great way to differentiate the characters, even in a very subtle way. Now, there are a couple oddities to note about the torso. The first one is the way that they've designed this heavily armored torso piece here. You would think that this is just sculpted, but in fact, if you remove the backpack, it's actually a separately sculpted, like soft plastic. Here, you can definitely see it from the top, actually. It's a soft plastic shell that just goes over a smooth torso piece. Now, I'm not entirely sure why they did this. It doesn't really hinder anything. Um, I guess it could make it a little difficult to peg in the backpack if it gets distorted and it like off centers from the peg hole, but it's not too big of a deal. I mean, once you get it lined up, you put the backpack on and it's really not going to go anywhere on the torso itself, but it's kind of an odd design choice. I felt it was worth noting, but yeah, it really doesn't affect anything negatively in my opinion. The other thing is the torso's joint here, uh, the torso ball joint, I think it is. It kind of wants to sit to one side or the other. So you can see here it's offset to my left and then to like try and straighten it, you kind of pop it and then it's offset to the right. There's almost like a ratchet in there that's wanting it to sit to the left or to the right, but it doesn't want to necessarily sit straight up and down. So something there is a little bit funky as well. Again, not a really negative detractor, but something that you'll probably notice when you pick up your own Wrecker figure. But now let's talk about what all this figure includes and entails. We'll start off with accessories and move on to the articulation. To start things off, we have the slightly animated, slightly realistic DC-17 Commando Blaster. It is a really nice sculpt, however, I think it is way too small. I'm sure pretty much everyone that reviews these figures is going to say that. For instance, if you give it to Wrecker here, it's like, like a blaster pistol. It's not like a blaster rifle the way that we see in maybe the Republic Commando games or the 3 and 3 quarter inch line. It just looks really, really small. It's worse with Wrecker, it's not as bad with Hunter, but it still just feels like they could have sized it up like 50% more and it would be the perfect size. But, I mean, it's a nice sculpt, it's got the good detail, it, it's solid, but it just could have been slightly, slightly better. He also comes with a backpack complete with nice little paint details, little lights, a little skull there, some thermal detonators I assume, something to blow stuff up with I'm sure, but those are all nicely sculpted on. And it does attach with that nice newly designed, or at least seemingly new to the Bad Batch figures, that, that T-peg which just prevents any kind of swiveling on the backpacks once they are on the figure. It's not going to like pivot or anything like that, and it, it holds on there very nicely, it's not going to shake out very nicely designed. Then we have Wrecker's helmet which is nicely painted, it's got great detail and honestly I'm, I'm impressed with the paint apps not being a little smudged or anything, especially when it's painted on a more squishy soft plastic, they're very nice and crisp. Now with the character of Wrecker, I've always wondered where his helmet came from because 
it's so unique, and I wish it had an explanation, I guess, in lore. It seems like the other characters' helmets are modified, like ATRT driver helmets, or modified Phase 3 clone trooper helmets, which is what I kind of feel like Hunter's helmet is. But they never really explain where the armor is actually from, or whether it's custom made for them, or customized by them. I guess I would just like to know. I'd like to know the lore behind their armor. But yeah, that's nothing against the armor. I think it looks really cool. I just like to know those like in-universe, in-canon explanations for the origins of these types of details. And I don't really know why. Just one of those things that I that I like about sci-fi worlds. I like to know about the random details and explanations for why things exist, even though they don't actually exist because Star Wars isn't real, kids. If you didn't know that, it's not real. But this is a perfect time to also talk about that eerie, smirking face of Wrecker that's going on there. Um, it's a pretty good likeness to Tamora Morrison. I'd say it's probably the best likeness that we've gotten so far. These characters are kind of tough to nail because they are mutated from the Jango Fett genes, so they're not going to be exactly like Tamora Morrison. They can't just reuse the Captain Rex sculpt or something like that. And I think Wrecker, it looks great. I really do. Um, but but Hunter is supposed to be the most unmodified out of all the clones, from, from my understanding. And it seems like he has the most non Tamora Morrison face sculpts out of any of them. And then, of course, we have Crosshair. And I think it captures the likeness of the character, or like the spirit of the character. But these two in particular, Hunter and Crosshair, just don't bear much resemblance to Tamora Morrison the way that I feel that they should if they're mutated from his genes. I don't know. I, Wrecker really does it nicely. You can see the Captain Rex face under there from the other Hasbro figures, but it has its own Wrecker quality to it. And then these two, I don't know. There's just something off about these two. And I've seen some really good 3D sculpts that people have done in like the customizing community. They've made printed heads that you can paint and swap these out for that have a much better likeness to Tamora Morrison. And I like those better for these two, but with uh, with Wrecker, I think it's pretty good. I think it's close enough. Now the detail, the smile, all of that is great. The only real complaint I have with this head sculpt is that they didn't do any paint apps to the scars. He's got all those scars from presumably a rather large explosion that went off way too close to his head, and yet they didn't do any uh, paint apps to that to actually bring that out. So again, I've seen in the customizing community many people that have gone over them with a very fine tipped brush and just kind of bring those out a little bit. I think that that is the way to go and maybe I'll do a video on uh, customizing the Bad Batch figures once I have all four of them. Uh, probably not, I probably won't wait for Echo because I think he's going to be much later in terms of release date, but once I get the, the main four, I'll probably try and do like a how to customize your Bad Batch Black Series figures, you know, and uh, showcase maybe painting those scars up a little bit. And now let's talk about the last accessory that he comes with. The vibroblade, the dagger, I'm not really sure what it is specifically, but it's very brittle, that's that's for sure. Uh, yeah, the handle on this knife broke uh, just trying to put it into his hand. I wasn't really stressing it, I wasn't straining it, and it snapped. Unfortunately, the hilt on this is built out of the, uh, the very hard plastic that Hasbro sometimes uses. The blade is a softer plastic, it's very bendy, but uh, the, the handle is a brittle plastic and yeah, any any amount of force might break it. I I don't know. But yeah, the handle appears to be made out of a similar hard plastic to what Hasbro has used in the past that has been brittle in the past. Though I've never seen one break out of the package like this. It seems like with other brittle plastics that Hasbro has used, it takes like 5-10 years before it goes this bad, but this was right out of the package like 5 minutes into having this figure and it snapped just trying to put this in his hand and I almost lost this tiny, tiny little piece, and I'm very grateful that I did not, because my plan is just to glue it back on and then permanently just store it in his sheath here on his boot, because, yeah, I think any use <laughs> after I glue it, it's pretty much going to be useless, because that'll just keep breaking off if I'm not careful, so... I guess keep that in mind, if you get this figure, it very likely could have that same brittle plastic, unless maybe they do a running change later on down the line. It's hard to say, but 
just be cautious when you uh, when you get this out of the package. Be careful with that blade because it will be uh, likely to snap on the slightest amount of straining to get it into his hand. But okay, we've got the accessories out of the way. Let's talk articulation on this figure. Popping the helmet off just to showcase that nice double jointed neck that he has side to side, forward, back. He can look all which ways because there is a ball joint in the torso as well as a ball joint here in the neck. So it gives a really good range of motion and he can wear the helmet and still have a pretty good look around. You can also, of course, have it in the very iconic, I guess for the show, partially on, partially off, though I don't think that would be very comfortable, but he sometimes walks around with it like this when he's not in combat. So you can pose him that way as well and still have Again, a pretty good range of motion to look all which ways you want. Then moving down to the shoulders, there is a butterfly, though mine is a little bit stuck. It is, it's getting there. It might need just a little bit of breaking in, but it is there. It uses the same shoulder pad design that we've seen with pretty much all of the new stormtroopers and clone troopers, where it is on a separate little leaf there that lets it float freely. So you can swivel the arm up, down, you can bring the arm out to above 90 there and also if you swivel it and you hold on to the shoulder pad the shoulder pad will travel with it though it doesn't seem to want to go past that angle right there on the other bad batch figures that shoulder pad will travel pretty much all the way around with it so there's probably just something in there that's binding it and it doesn't want to move past that and i really don't want to stress it because i wouldn't want to rip this piece off since it is the softer rubber plastic it could rip or tear if you strain it too much. So, uh, you know, better to play it safe than to be sorry later and have a shoulderless wrecker figure. Moving down to the elbow, we have a really nice pinless single jointed elbow. Gets you just a little past 90 and of course there's a swivel so you can swivel it side to side like he's, I don't know, like he's beatboxing or something. Yeah, I'm gonna wreck it. That's right, we're gonna gonna wreck it. Yeah, um, I think maybe they just stole this character from Wreck-It Ralph at this point because, uh, yeah, it's it's obvious. He's, he's Wreck-It Ralph, it just in clone armor, basically. Then down to the hands, we have a swivel as well as an in and out hinge. You can get it to there and to there. On this hand, it's an up and a down with the swivel all the way around. Very, very nice. And then torso, you got the double ball joint, so good side to side, forward crunch, back crunch. And again, you do have that weird like ratchet on the swivel. Not sure if there's a way to avoid that or get rid of that, or maybe it's just my figure, but again, worth noting, worth pointing out, but I don't think it's severe enough that it should cause you not to get this figure if you like the Bad Batch characters. Moving on down to the hips, you got the ball joint and the thigh swivel, forward, back, swivel there pinless single jointed knees which gets you right to there which is a pretty good crunch i feel like you don't really need anything more than that once again the knee pads are attached to the thigh that's just how pretty much every trooper is now at least the clone troopers are i don't really like that design i feel like they should be attached at the shin because i mean if you are a soldier and you're crouching what good is a knee pad if it's all the way up here on your thigh but I don't know, I, I don't work for Hasbro, so I can't really say why that is the way that it is, but it just is, so there you go. As for the foot, you've got the hinge and the rocker, so you can hinge it pretty much like into the ballet position, and then you can get it forward to there, and then rocker side to side. Again, pretty much standard. It's basically just exactly what we've gotten with Hunter and exactly what we've gotten with Crosshair. It's just scaled up to be bigger and bulkier and better for Hunter. Um, not Hunter, for Wrecker. It's just bigger and bulkier, but it's pretty much, again, the same articulation and really even the same armor design, just all scaled up so that he can, he can wreck it, you know? He can smash stuff. So I'd say overall, this is a pretty great figure. Is it worth it as a deluxe figure? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think it is personally, but it's a good figure. It's solid. It's got good articulation. It's got good, uh, good sculpt and everything, but it's a tough sell at a full deluxe figure. But I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's part of the rising cost and rising everything in the world of collecting and just the world in general. So I guess we, uh, we have to deal with it or uh, just deal with not owning any new collectibles. 
Now for scale, here he is next to Hunter, and here he is next to Crosshair. All of these are standing up perfectly straight, armor geared up and everything. So I think it's pretty accurate because Wrecker would be the largest, Hunter would be, I think, the smallest, and then Crosshair is kind of the middle ground because he's taller and skinnier, but he's not quite as tall as Wrecker, I don't think, in the show. There's never really a scene that I'm aware of where they're all lined up kind of, you know, head to head so you can actually see that, but overall I'd say that's a pretty good scale difference there to have them all be a little bit different in terms of height. And the Elite Squad Trooper there is about the same height as Hunter, so you could almost assume that this is like the standard clone height, and of course he's not really a clone trooper, uh, spoiler warning, but I mean, it, it works. They're probably using the same clone trooper model for this character in the show anyways, so they're about the same height. It works. Crosshair's a little bit taller. Wrecker is, of course, the tallest, and it's pretty cool. It's nice that they actually paid attention and got the scale fairly right, at least, I think. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Just leave it down in the comments if I am. I probably am, because... I mean, what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. Now that wraps up the Wrecker portion of this video, and I just want to talk briefly about these two figures very, very briefly at the end here and uh, give my thoughts on them because I think they're cool. I just don't think that I really need to do a full review on them. Hunter basically just reuses the entire body of Crosshair. They're the same figure, just different shoulder pads, a few different little accessories, slightly different paint apps, a complete commando backpack instead of one with the slot for the sniper rifle and of course a different helmet a different face sculpt which i'm not terribly fond of if that will focus there we go um, i'm not terribly fond of it but i also don't hate it it's not the worst i just think it could have been a little bit more like tomorrow morrison but yeah i mean i'm probably just going to display it with the helmet on anyways so it's really not that big of a deal it's more of just a a tiny teensy weeny little uh, little gripe that I had with the figure. As for the Elite Squad Trooper, I think it's cool. It's basically just a clone trooper in gray armor, which I guess is pretty neat. However, I do wish they'd gotten the paint apps even remotely accurate instead of just doing an all gray trooper. They they could have had the light gray and the stripes and everything. Not entirely sure why they didn't do that, but overall, it's a cool figure. It's it's nice. It's weird that they use the Captain Rex legs. I don't really understand why that decision was made. It feels like a very like 2005 kit bash kind of reissue thing that Hasbro would have done back then because it doesn't feel like a 2020 or a 2021 type Hasbro thing, but they did it and it works. I won't say that it's like a bad figure because of the legs. I think it's it's serviceable, it does its job, it's, it's nice. Just wish the paint apps had been more accurate, and really that's my only major gripe with this figure. And I guess really the only other thing to say is uh, Hasbro, where's the vintage collection version of these figures? Like why have we not gotten any Bad Batch figures from the vintage collection, and yet we've got so far four of these figures in the Black series, along with Tech and Captain Rex, and even like background characters like the Shock Trooper Commander and the one Imperial Officer, all those are on pre-order now. Uh, why don't we have any vintage collection figures being announced? I, I just don't get it. Like when, when uh, The Mandalorian came out and when The Clone Wars came out, those figures were on shelves like as the show was released. And yet when we, uh, when we get the Bad Batch, we don't get anything. Now, yes, I am aware, of course, of the Amazon 4-pack, but those aren't even main characters. We've got Captain Rex and the Elite Squad Trooper and uh, Hauser, Captain Hauser, which is cool. I like him, and I also really love Captain Grey. I never would have expected those figures to be released in any line. However, um, where's uh, where's the Bad Batch? Where, where are they at? Hmm? Hmm? Just just wondering, where's where's the 3 and 3 quarter inch line? Because personally... I'm, I'm much more in favor of a three and three quarter inch line as far as my collection goes. But when I like a character and the only option is uh, Black Series, I will still get the Black Series version. It's just kind of a bummer that we don't have even an announcement for Vintage Collection. But anyways, I digress. There is the review of Wrecker and kind of my brief opinions on the other members of the Bad Batch that I haven't been able to fully review yet because I did do a full crosshair review, just didn't get to do these guys yet. So. That's the review of them. They're cool. Get them if you like the show. Get them if you like clone troopers. 
don't get them if you don't, I guess. I, I don't know. But that will do it for this video. As always, there's a link down in the description. If you want to check out my Instagram for toy photography and just toy announcements and things like that, as well as an Entertainment Earth link, which you can use to pre-order pretty much any of these figures. Some of them you might have to wait for because they'll be part of like the second batch and not the original release batch. Um, but yeah, if you pre-order them, you're at least guaranteed to get them sometime rather than uh, waiting around and hoping they pop up at your Walmart or something like that. So you can use that link. It does help out the channel just a little bit if you do. And I do appreciate that so very much. And yeah, if you like this video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, um, getting a little bit better with the like the frequent uploads and stuff. But uh, that never lasts very long. So uh, if you subscribe, you will get very inconsistent content, but uh, it'll be content at least, right? Yeah. Anyways, as always, thank you for watching and I will be sure to catch you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.